So 2.4. Now here we're specifically talking about operations with functions. So as you can see in that first part, we're literally talking about what if you wanted to add two functions, subtract, multiply, or divide them. So this is basically, um, you can think of, you know, where with these operations, we're combining these functions and trying to see what happens with them. So the way these definitions work, when they talk about f plus g uh, of x, they're basically saying individually add the f of x function with the g of x function. And then, you know, the 093 guys, we just did this with our Susie and Joe example where they had the s minus j of x at seven. We evaluated that. So that's where they were actually coming from was using this operations of function. So your addition, like I said, is defined as f of x plus g of x. For your subtraction, f minus g, for the two functions, we'll be taking the first function, subtracting the second one, multiplication, same format. So whichever function we write first, that's the first function that we uh, you know, do in our calculation. And then g of x is the second function, so that's the one we're adding next or subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So the way you write it in the order here is the order in which we do our operations in. Now, the one thing you got to be careful because anytime we work with division, any kind of number that makes our denominator zero, we have to exclude those from our domain. So if there's any number that would make the g of x value a zero because we're doing f of x divided by g of x, we need to make sure we're not using those numbers as part of our functions here. And we'll look at examples for those. So just starting out with some simple Examples here, they're saying find and simplify. So you've got h plus j at five. And let's start here. So that's h of x is defined as x squared. And j of x is defined as three guys. So they're telling us what each of these functions are. And then for part A, they're saying, okay, so if we take these two functions and we wanna add them together, what are we going to get? So remember, you are using those um, function definitions like they're showing us here at our handout. So when we're talking about addition, you take the first function, evaluate it at that value, which would be five in our case, and add that to the second function. So this guy should be rewritten as h at five plus the j function evaluated at five. So if I put five in the h function, what will I get? 25, right? Because h is x squared, so that will become 5 squared, which will of course become 25. And then we're adding these two functions. So now you're going with j to the 5. So j evaluated at 5 will give us what? 15. So you will do 3 times 5, which will give us 15. And what is that added to? 40. So it's really just taking each individual function evaluated at this value of x that they're giving you, take the 5, put it in the h function, get your answer, take the 5, put it in the g function, get your answer, and then whatever that operation is, do that. So if it's plus, you add, minus, subtract, you know, multiply, divide, depending on what you're given. If we look at part b here, Part B is H times J, and that's evaluated at two. So multiplication, again, if you go back and look at the definition, it's going to be F of X times G of X. So in our example, that would of course be H of two multiplied at J of two. So using the same h and j functions, what is h of two going to give us? Four, right? Because that's gonna be two times two. 
And what is j of 2? 6. Yeah, 3 times 2 is 6. And since this was also a multiplication between our two functions, what does that come out to? 24. 24. Okay, so what do you think happens with parts C and D? What are you going to get for part C and D? A over 3? Okay. Did anybody else get that answer? Or no? You did? Well, you don't count. <laughs> since you already know that. Amy? A over 3? All right. Okay. So that's two verifications that I was looking for. So let's see. You will, of course, follow your definition. This would be taking the H of A function and dividing it by the J of A. Right? So instead of giving us a number, we're just going with another variable. So we're using a. Now remember, your h function is x squared. So this will, of course, become a squared. And then the j function is 3 times x. So that will become 3 over a, right? So you've got a times a, or a squared on the top. And then you have 3 times a. So as you can see, yeah, one of those A's you can cancel out. You can reduce your fraction and you end up with A over 3. Very good, Dolly. Oh, that was some. Oh, was it you? No. So who gave you the answer? But nobody gave me that. I didn't say anything. It was. Um, I thought you said A over 3. It was. Uh, oh, it was. We are right. Yeah, C. Okay, somehow I was like, somebody. It was the first <laughs> answer. Okay, so A over 3. Um, on that. Now, in that same sense, what's going to happen with part B? Because again, they're not giving us a number. Okay, so what will that give you? Okay, so part B was H minus J. So that will be X squared for the H and then. 3x for the j, and what can we do with that? If nobody else gives me an answer, then you can. Okay. Can we divide by x? No. No? Because you have to have two sides to an equation if you want to divide by x. Can you take that an x? Yeah, factor it out. There's an x in common. We can bring out that x. So you're kind of on the right track, but you don't want to divide. But you do want to just bring out the common factor and bring it outside. All righty, very good. Okay, so as I was talking in terms of domain for these functions, so for the domain of uh, the um, functions that are being uh, connected through your plus minus multiplication or division is actually going to be the intersection of the first function and the intersection of the second function. So we're saying you take the domain of the f function uh, and the domain of the g function and you actually figure out what is going to be common between those two domains and that's actually what's going to be part of your uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division functions. With the exception of any of those numbers make our function on the denominator a zero, we have to exclude that. We have to keep it out. So we're kind of doing that here in these next set of examples. Um, so just to kind of get an idea of those, we're actually using ordered pairs, and then we'll come back and do an equation format. So let's go ahead, write these guys down. This is H, which is defined as a set of ordered pairs, so you have the ordered pairs 2, 10, 4, 0, 6, 8, and then for the J function, they are giving us 2 and 5, and 
means except zero. So this is how we're defining our two functions here. Now the first part they're asking us find h plus j and then find the domain of that function and then find h divided by j and find the domain of that function. So let's start with the h plus j part first. Okay. So in this case we're actually going to start by finding the domain first and then we'll come with the uh, function definitions themselves. So remember what they said, go with the intersection of the two functions. So what is the domain of just the H function itself? Domain of the H function. Yeah, it's the X values, right? So two, four, and six. What is the domain uh, of the J function? Two and six. Very good. Now, let's talk about the domain of our H plus J function. This is where it's got to be the intersection. So what numbers intersect? Two and six, right? Because this guy doesn't have a four, so we cannot use a four in the intersections. It's only going to be the numbers that are in both our domains, and that's going to be two and six. So once you have the domain uh, for the H plus J function, now we can go ahead and figure out what those functions will be. So we are now ready to start defining, start at the first x value, h plus j evaluated at two. So of course, using our definition, that will be taking h of two and adding it with the j of two function. So what is h of two and j of two from our uh, definitions? What is h of two? 10, right? Because you go to the ordered pair, find where the two is, and the corresponding y value is going to be the answer. Because remember, we're not working with equations here, we're working with ordered pairs. So when I say find h of two, that means go to the h function and find the ordered pair that has two for the x, which is of course this first one, which means the answer is going to be 10. For j of two, Five. Well, the answer is just 10. Okay. okay. Just for the h of 2 function. Yeah. yeah. But then you know, of course, it's not 10 you... times 2. Right. right. And of course, that adds up to 15. 15. So that means for our h of j function, and I guess I'm actually going to write it here on the side. To define it like our set of ordered pairs, we started out with the 2, we came out with the 15. Right? Started with the 2, final answer is 15. This is for the addition function. Now remember, our domain for the h plus j had two, but also a six. So you basically repeat the process with h plus j at six, which will give us h of six plus the j of six. It's eight. Okay, so let's see. From h of six, you're going to get eight, right? From j of six, you're gonna get zero. zero. So that's going to become eight plus zero. So of course there's an eight, right? So that's going to give us a new ordered pair for the addition function as six and eight. And 
that's what your answer is going to look like for the H plus J. When they say find H plus J, that's what we're trying to find. And what was the other part of the question asking us? H divided by J. So now we need to basically repeat the same process for the division function. Now the intersection of the domain, we already have that. So ideally, if everything works out, we should be able to use the same two and six for the H divided by J because the intersection of the two individuals is not gonna change. Those are the only numbers that are common between both our uh, functions. So let's go ahead and start with uh, two for the division part. So H divided by J evaluated at two. So same thing, H of two divided by J of two. So what is H of two again? 10 divided by j of 2, 5. 10 divided by 5, 2. So that's going to give us the ordered pair. We started out with the 2, we ended with the 2. So that's, uh, I guess I'm going to write it here. h divided by j will be the ordered pair 2 and 2. Obviously, repeat the same thing with um, the six. So H divided by J, evaluated at the number six. So H of six divided by J of six. What is H of six? Eight. And J of six, zero. So this is where we run into problems because anytime we do the division and anything that makes my division, my denominator a zero, I need to exclude that from my domain because what happens when I do eight divided by zero? No, oh my God, no. It is undefined. <laughs> yeah, because if you divide eight by zero on your calculator, what does your calculator tell you? Error. Exactly, it tells you error. It's not giving you zero as the answer. So since this is undefined, I actually cannot use six in my division function because six is making my denominator zero, making my denominator zero gives me an undefined answer, so I can't really have an ordered pair, so I'm actually excluding six. Um, so, you can't really use the six because he's not a happy number to use. So do you see why we were able to use six in the addition function, but not able to use the six in the division function? Yeah? Alrighty, so I think our next example that we have is going to be the one where you're looking at function definitions. And when you're looking at function definitions, then you know our process of solving these is going to be a little bit different. So tell me, what is the domain of the h of x equals square root of x function? Yeah, that's your square root of x function. It's going to be zero to infinity. For the second function, g of x? Yeah, it's your identity function that we just looked at. So this guy has negative 
to positive infinity. So if we talk about finding the intersection between the two uh, domains, what is it going to be? What is the common ground between these two domains? Zero to infinity. Zero to infinity, yeah. So your intersection domain is actually going to go from zero to infinity, because that's the only part that's going to be common between the two. And you know the best way to visualize that is draw your number lines. So if I draw my number lines, this guy is starting at zero and going to infinity, which means I'm looking at this part of my graph, right? For the other one, it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity, which means I'm using the entire x-axis. So you can see the only place where the overlap happens is starting at zero and going to infinity. So that's what your domain is going to be. Now, when you talk about finding the function h minus j, now here they're not giving us numbers, right? Which means we're doing this in the general form, which means just with the x. So that's going to be h of x minus j of x. So what should that come out to be? What is our h of x function? Yeah, h of x is square root of x minus j of x is just x. And you can see since this guy includes both square root of x and just the x by itself, because square root of x has restrictions, the entire function has to go with the domain that will satisfy square root of x because he's more restricted, right? So that's why this guy, our domain for h minus j is only going to be that intersection portion because this guy cannot use negative numbers in there, which means automatically this x also has to follow the same numbers. What happens with the j times h? What will that be? Yeah, so j again is x. You are multiplying it with h, which is square root of x. The same thing, right? This square root of x is also putting a restriction on this x, which is on the outside. Since I can only use zero and positive numbers in there, those are the same numbers I can use for this x on the outside. So this guy will again have the intersection as its domain. So just to show you the difference between when the examples are given to you as ordered pairs, how you need to do this, when the examples are given to you as equations, how you need to do this. All right, guys, so the only thing we need to talk about next is the composition of functions and we'll be done with 2.4. Uh, we do have section 2.5.